Like many of you out there, I've been 3D printing Prusa's face shields for the past month. This is the original RC3 design by Prusa, and I love the design, but one of the first things you notice about this is just how thick and bulky it is. And in my opinion, it doesn't need to be this thick. And I've also had people in the healthcare industry say the same thing. I'm quite surprised Prusa didn't try to make any improvements to maximize manufacturability. For the past week, I've had a chance to play around with this original RC3 design, and I've managed to drastically reduce print times and improve overall efficiency. This is what I've ended up with. It's still strong, it's flexible, and it's perfectly capable of holding the visor material. I'm now able to get 50 of these from a one kilogram spool like this, whereas before, I was only able to get 18. If you look at them side by side, you can see that the depth is a lot less. And from what would have been one face shield, you can now get almost three. I'm also able to print in stacks of up to 25 high. So what I wanted to do in this video was provide you with my design files and also walk you through how you can create your own custom stacks to 3D print. So let's take a look. Basically what I did was I imported Prusa's model into Fusion 360 and I just cut a big slice off the top. First thing I did was add some pads and this basically just increases the surface area for that first layer, helps it stick and prevents warping during long prints. The stack in itself is quite straightforward, you just create a duplicate of the shield and you place it at a set height above the one below. I made this height a configurable parameter so that I could change it easily during the printing process. It's important to note here that this height is going to change based on your printer and your layer height. So you really have to set this up and play around with it. There's no sort of one fits all solution, it is a trial and error process. I found that a 0.25 mil gap worked for me, but that doesn't necessarily mean it'll work for you. So the files I've provided do have a 0.25 mil gap between each shield, but I've also provided a single shield STL, so you can do the same as me and play around with these height values. For slicing, you can either export as a single stack of 24 like this, or you can split it up into two stacks of 12. And I do find that two stacks of 12 seems to be more reliable. I'm printing at 0.3 millimeters layer height at a 30% infill using PETG. PLA might not be best for this design. PLA is a weaker material and it's more likely that this design will break using PLA. You will need to insert custom supports for where the visor attaches, but I've actually got a tutorial on custom supports in Prusa Slicer, so I'll leave a card at the top right of the screen. When it comes to printing, I'd recommend slowing the first layer all the way down to 25%. This just gives you a perfect first layer and reduces the likelihood of a failed print. The prints are turning out fairly well. It's taken a couple of iterations to get them stacking properly and reliably, but as I said before, there is a lot of trial and error involved here and it's down to you and your printer. It's still not perfect, I'm tweaking this all the time and as you can see here on the back, there are still some gaps between some of the visors. The support material can be easily removed using pliers and you can see that the finish is reasonably good, especially for PETG. The shields break apart really easily, and again, this depends on the, the gap that you set between them. If you set it too low, they're going to bond really well. If you set it too high, they're not going to bond at all. It's a bit of a trade-off between the two, and you've really just got to find that sweet spot. You can see here that even with those reduced dimensions, they're still very strong and flexible. They're also still able to hold and support the visor material. There really is no reason for them to be bigger than this. It's worth checking with your local healthcare providers to see which of the shields they'd actually prefer. If you'd like to get your hands on the files, I'll leave a link in the description below to my website. Just come up to the downloads page, hit CAD files and 3D models, scroll down a little bit and you'll see them here. Just hit the download button and you'll see the zip file will download. If you've got any tips or suggestions on how I can improve these, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.